friends, I have a new story for us today, and it is called Flora and Ulysses, The Illuminated Adventure Adventures. Now, I will say this is a little bit longer than most of the stories and things that I will share. So if you need to pause it, take a break, go for it. If you, When you're reading it for yourself, if you need to take a break, I get it. So over here on the Prepare to Read side, it says, A fantasy is an imaginative story with characters and events that are not real. Authors of fantasies tell the story through the plot or the main events of the story. Fantasy stories may include illustrations that describe the characters and setting and may give clues about the plot. Some fantasy stories are set in the real world, but the characters might have unusual abilities. And then it says, look at the pictures in the section. What do you notice about the girl in the story? What would you like to learn about her? Write your ideas below. So before we continue, pause it, do this in your book, fill that in. And we've got some vocabulary words. You'll see these highlighted in our story. And if you look at the bottom of the page, like on here, you'll see the definition of those words. I'm not gonna read that as I'm going, but just know that that's there to help you know what those words mean. And this story is written by Kate DeCamelo. In the Tickham kitchen late on a summer afternoon. <clears throat> Happy birthday to you. What's this, Donald? This is your birthday present. It is a Ulysses Super Section Multi-Terrain 2000 XL Happy Birthday. It's a vacuum cleaner. It's a Ulysses 2000 X. Yep, it's the crown jewel of vacuums. It features an extra long cord so that absolutely no mess, no dirt is ever out of your reach. It's indoor, outdoor. It goes everywhere. It does everything. Goody. You have to try it. Turn it on. For heaven's sake, Donald. Please. Whoa, hey now. What in the world, Donald? It's multi-terrain. You should try it outside. And that's how it all began, with a vacuum cleaner. Really? Flora Bell Buckman was in her room at her desk. She was very busy. She was doing two things at once. She was ignoring her mother, and she was also reading a comic book entitled The Illuminated Adventures of the Amazing Incandesto. Flora, her mother shouted, what are you doing up there? I'm reading, Flora shouted back. Remember the contract, her mother shouted. Do not forget the contract. At the beginning of summer, in a moment of weakness, Flora had made the mistake of signing a contract that said she would work to turn her face away from the idiotic hijinks of comics and toward the bright light of true literature. Those were the exact words of the contract. They were her mother's words. Flora's mother was a writer. She was divorced and she wrote romance novels. Talk about idiotic hijinks. Flora hated romance novels. In fact, she hated romance. I hate romance, said Flora out loud to herself. She liked the way the words sounded. She imagined them floating above her in a comic strip bubble. It was a comforting thing to have words hanging over her head, especially negative words about romance. Flora's mother had often accused Flora of being a natural born cynic. Flora suspected that this was true. She was a natural born cynic who lived in defiance of contracts. Yep, thought Flora, that's me. She bent her head and went back to reading about the amazing incandesto. She was interrupted a few minutes later by a very loud noise. It sounded as if a jet plane had landed in the Tickham's backyard. What the heck, said Flora. She got up from her desk and looked out the window and saw Mrs. Tickham running around the backyard with a shiny oversized vacuum cleaner. It looked like she was vacuuming the yard. That can't be, thought Flora. Who vacuums their yard? Actually, it didn't look like Mrs. Tickham knew what she was doing. It was more like the vacuum cleaner was in charge and the vacuum cleaner seemed to be out of its mind or its engine or something. A few bolts shy of a load, said Flora out loud. And then she saw Mrs. Tickham and the vacuum cleaner were headed directly for a squirrel. Hey now, 
said Flora. She banged on the window. Watch out, she shouted. You're going to vacuum up that squirrel. She said the words and then she had a strange moment of seeing them hanging over her head. You're going to vacuum up that squirrel. There is just no predicting what kind of sentences you might say, thought Flora. For instance, who would ever think you're going to vacuum up that squirrel? It didn't make any difference though what words she said. Flora was too far away. The vacuum cleaner was too loud and also clearly it was bent on destruction. This malfeasance must be stopped, said Flora in a deep superhero voice. This malfeasance must be stopped was what she, the unassuming janitor Alfred T. Slipper always said before he was transformed into the amazing incandesto and became a towering crime-fighting pillar of light. Unfortunately, Alfred T. Slipper wasn't present. Where was incandesto when you need him? Not that Flora really believed in superheroes, but still. She stood at the window and watched the squirrel as the squirrel was vacuumed up. Poof, whoop, holy begumba, said Flora. Not much goes on in the mind of a squirrel. Huge portions of what is loosely termed the squirrel brain are given over to one thought, food. The average squirrel cognition goes something like this. I wonder what there is to eat. This thought is then repeated with small variations. Where's the food? Man, I sure am hungry. Is that a piece of food? And are there more pieces of food? Some six or 7,000 times a day. All of this is to say that when the squirrel in the Tickham's backyard got swallowed up by the Ulysses 2000X, there weren't a lot of terribly profound thoughts going through his head. As the vacuum cleaner roared toward him, he did not, for instance, think, here at last is my fate, come to meet me. He did not think, oh, please give me one more chance and I will be good. What he thought was, man, I sure am hungry. And then there was a terrible roar and he was sucked right off his feet. At that point, there were no thoughts in his squirrel head, not even thoughts of food. Seemingly swallowing a squirrel was a bit much even for the powerful, indomitable, indoor-outdoor Ulysses 2000X. Mrs. Tickham's birthday machine let out an uncertain roar and stuttered to a stop. Mrs. Tickham bent over and looked down at the vacuum cleaner. There was a tail sticking out of it. For heaven's sake, said Mrs. Tickham, what next? She dropped to her knees and gave the tail a tentative tug. She stood, she looked around the yard, help! She said, I think I've killed a squirrel. Flora ran from her room. She ran down the stairs. As she ran, she thought, for a cynic, I am a surprisingly helpful person. She went out the back door. Her mother called to her. She said, where are you go going, Flora Bell? Flora didn't answer her. She never answered her mother when she called her Flora Bell. Sometimes she didn't answer her mother when she called her Flora either. Flora ran through the tall grass and cleared the fence beyond her yard and the Tickums in a single bound. Move out of the way, said Flora. She gave Mrs. Tickham a shove and grabbed a hold of the vacuum cleaner. It was heavy. She picked it up and shook it. Nothing happened. She shook harder. The squirrel dropped out of the vacuum cleaner and landed with a plop in the grass. He didn't look that great. He was missing a lot of fur. Vacuumed off, Flora assumed. His eyelids fluttered. His chest rose and fell and rose again. And then it stopped moving altogether. Flora knelt. She put a finger on the squirrel's chest. At the back of each issue of The Illuminated Adventures of the Amazing Incandesto, there were a series of bonus comics. One of Flora's very favorite bo bonus comics was entitled, Terrible Things Can Happen to You. As a cynic, Flora found it was wise to be prepared. Who knew what horrible, unpredictable thing would happen next? Terrible things can happen to you detailed what action to take if you inadvertently consumed plastic fruit. This happened more often than you would suppose. Some plastic fruit was extremely realistic looking. How to perform the Heimlich maneuver on your elderly Aunt Edith if she choked on a stringy piece of steak at an all-you-can-eat buffet. What to do if you were wearing a striped shirt and a swarm of locusts descended, run, locusts eat stripes. And of course, how to administer everyone's favorite life-saving technique, CPR. <laughs>
terrible things can happen to you did not, however, detail exactly how someone was supposed to give CPR to a squirrel. I'll figure it out, said Flora. What will you figure out, said Mrs. Tickham. Flora didn't answer her. Instead, she bent down and put her mouth on the squirrel's mouth. It tasted funny. If she were forced to describe it, she would say it tasted exactly like squirrel. Fuzzy, damp, and slightly nutty. Have you lost your mind? said Mrs. Tickham. Flora ignored her. She breathed into the squirrel's mouth. She pushed down on his small chest. She started to count. Breathe, the squirrel obliged. He took a deep, shuddering breath, and then another, and another. The squirrel returned. The squirrel was a little unsteady on his feet. His brain felt larger, roomier. It was as if several doors in the dark room of his self, doors he hadn't even known existed, had suddenly been flung wide. Everything was shot through with meaning, purpose, light. However, the squirrel was still a squirrel and he was hungry, very. Who can say what astonishments are hidden inside this most mundane being? Flora and Mrs. Tickham noticed at the same time. The squirrel, said Flora. The vacuum cleaner, said Mrs. Tickham. Together they stared at the Ulysses 2000X and at the squirrel who was holding it over his head with one paw. That can't be, said Mrs. Tickham. The squirrel shook the vacuum cleaner. That can't be, said Mrs. Tickham. You already said that, said Flora. I'm repeating myself, you're repeating yourself. Maybe I have a brain tumor, said Mrs. Tickham. It was certainly possible that Mrs. Tickham had a brain tumor. Flora knew from reading terrible things can happen to you that a surprising number of people who were walking around with tumors in their brains and didn't even know it. That was the thing about tragedy. It was just sitting there, keeping you company, waiting, and you had absolutely no idea. This was the kind of helpful information you could get from the comics if you paid attention. The other kind of information that you absorbed from the regular reading of comics, most particularly from the regular reading of the illuminated adventures of the amazing Incandesto, was that impossible things happened all the time. For instance, heroes, superheroes were born of ridiculous and unlikely circumstances spider bites chemical spills planetary dislocation and in the case of alfred t slipper from an accident accidental submersion in an industrial vat an industrial sized vat of cleaning solution called incandesto the cleaning professional's hard-working friend i don't think you have a brain tumor said flora there might be another explanation uh-huh said Mrs. Tickham. What's the other explanation? Have you ever heard of incandesto? What? said Mrs. Tickham. Who? said Flora. Incandesto is a who. He's a superhero. Right, said Mrs. Tickham. And your point is? Flora raised her right hand. She pointed with a single finger at the squirrel. Surely you're not implying, said Mrs. Tickham. The squirrel lowered the vacuum cleaner to the ground. He held himself very still. He considered both of them. His whiskers twitched and trembled. There were cracker crumbs on his head. He was a squirrel. How could he be a superhero too? Alfred T. Slipper was a janitor. Most of the time, people looked right past him. Sometimes, often in fact, they treated him with disdain. They had no idea of the astonishing acts of heroism, the blinding light contained within his outward humdrum disguise. Only Alfred's parakeet, Dolores, knew who he was and what he could do. The world will misunderstand him, said Flora. You bet it will, said Mrs. Tickham. Mrs. Tickham called out. Mr. Tickham called out. Are you done vacuuming? What about the Ulysses? Are you just going to leave it sitting there? Ulysses, whispered Flora. She felt a shiver run up from the back of her head to the base of her spine. She might be a natural born cynic, but she knew the right word when she heard it. Ulysses, she said again. She bent down and held out her hand to the squirrel. Come here, Ulysses, she said. She spoke to him and he understood her. What the girl said was, Ulysses, come here, Ulysses. 
and without thinking, he moved toward her. It's okay, she said, and he believed her. It was astonishing. Everything was astonishing. The setting sun was illuminating each blade of grass. It was reflecting off the girl's glasses, making a halo of light around the girl's round head, setting the whole world on fire. The squirrel thought, when did things become so beautiful? And if it has been this way all along, how is it that I never noticed before? Listen to me, the girl said. My name is Flora. Your name is Ulysses. Okay, thought the squirrel. She put her hand on him. She picked him up. She cradled him in her left arm. He felt nothing but happiness. Why had he always been so terrified of humans? He couldn't imagine. So there are some other pages that are in your checklist. That's where these are about Flora and Ulysses. I hope you enjoyed this story. I love it. I think it's so sweet and funny.